Uh, let's solve an example of a, a, a question with a uniform circular motion. And this is a typical example of a car negotiating a curve. So here's what is uh, given to us is uh, a car with mass uh, m, um, of course, a gravity. Um, it's negotiating a curve with a radius r. And uh, there is uh, a coefficient of friction, a static friction given between the tires and the asphalt on uh, extreme weather, such as a, a rainy day. And the question is, we want to know what kind of sign do we have to put uh, to caution the drivers, like what should be the maximum speed? So pretty much we're looking for how fast should this car move so that to be successful in negotiating this curve, okay? Um, so pretty much what we're going to do now here in the analysis is, first of all, realizing we're dealing with uniform circular motion, so we're assuming constant speed throughout the... Uh, negotiation of the curve. Uh, the, the equation is pretty straightforward. Fc equal to mass times centripetal acceleration, right? Um, and we know that uh, uh, centripetal acceleration is v squared over uh, r. So pretty much since we're looking for the velocity, the velocity is going to be square root of Fc times r over m. Right, so we need to find what is FC in order to uh, be able to continue. So in order to do that, we have to draw. So so far, we just solved the Newton's law second uh, Newton's uh, second law equation in terms of velocity. Right. So now we have to draw a free body diagram to see what is FC. Right, because FC we don't know it. So this is something that we don't know. Uh, and uh, I uh, drew. Uh, top view of the situation, the car negotiating the curve, and the front view. So here's a car, there is a center of uh, rotation, and we want to know what forces are acting on the car, right? So I can draw them here first. So we have, of course, uh, gravity, we have the normal force, and of course, what keeps the car from not going straight is static friction between the tires and the asphalt, right? So it's in here, but we just draw it there. So here's our free body diagram. One more time, we have gravity, we have normal force, and then we have coefficient, uh, sorry, force of static friction. I'm gonna draw a dashed line here to point out that here is a center. So when you solve problems with circular motion, the most important thing to do is identify where is the center of rotation and you know that your net force or some force has to point on that direction in order for your object to go on a circular motion. Okay, um, so obviously we're going to choose this as our x-axis, the direction of the uh, acceleration and perpendicular to it the y-axis. So we start writing uh, Newton's second law, uh, or sorry, we're trying to find what is the, uh, the, the centripetal force, and we can realize here that the centripetal force is nothing but the force of friction, right? Why are we saying that? Because we know in this case, normal force is actually just balancing gravity, okay? Uh, but we know that friction is related to normal force with a coefficient of a static friction so which means that the centripetal force is nothing but static friction which is mu s times normal which in terms is mg so if we go back to our equation the velocity is square root of uh, centripetal force which is mu s times mg times the a radius of the curve divided by um, g. No, sorry, divided by mass. Right, and thank God, the, uh, the speed the car has to negotiate the curve, as you can see, does not depend on the 
um, does not depend on the mass of the car. It depends only on the type of tires, the radius and uh, the gravity of what planet you're in. Um, and then at this point, you can plug in the numbers. So uh, an example of numbers here, mu s equal to uh, one, g equal to 10. You realize that being on a different planet, the speed should be different, right? And the radius equal to also uh, 10. Uh, and if that's the case, the velocity will be square root of 100, which is 10 meters per second, which is about 36 kilometers per hour. All right? So the sign that you should put at the entrance of this uh, curve should be, please, uh, velocity uh, suggested 36 kilometers per hour. Usually are those orange or yellow signs. Okay, now what happens if uh, mu s decreases a lot, then uh, you cannot rely anymore on friction. So we use a bank curve. So on a bank curve, instead of, uh, so here's a section of a bank curve. Instead of having the street horizontal, we actually bank it with some angle theta. So now the car is uh, negotiating this uh, curve. I'm trying my best here to draw a 3D thingy. It's going on, a, on an angle, right? So if you were to draw a free body diagram, we have uh, gravity, we have normal, and then we know that the center of rotation is somewhere here. That's the actual radius. So we know that the acceleration is on that direction. So we know that the net force has to be on that direction. Okay, so if there is no uh, if there is no uh, friction, for example, and you have to rely just on uh, those conditions on uh, on the band, it means that a section of a normal this is that f and x, and this is that f and y. Uh, what happens is the y component of the normal will act just to balance gravity, and the x component of the normal will be our centripetal force, which is uh, mass times acceleration. All right. Uh, but what happens is that. Uh, if we use components, the normal force is, uh, if that's the angle theta, then uh, this is the angle theta. So we have, uh, for number two, what we have is Fn sine theta equal to m v squared over r. And for number one, we have Fn cos theta to mg and uh, what we do here is to figure out what should be the angle for example or what should be the velocity but the usual relationship is we combine them and what we get is um, tan theta equal to uh, v squared over rg Right? We divide equation one, we divide it by the equation two, and sorry, equation uh, the other way around. Equation two, we divide by equation one, and we get this relationship. So this is a general equation for band curve, right? And uh, that's what you use to solve for whatever is that uh, you need to find. Of course, if the car goes slower or faster, then friction will kick in because the car will tend to go upward or downward depending uh, what happened with the actual speed of the car. Okay? Uh, so practice with some more questions uh, with uh, circular motion from the textbook, and I'm sure that you'll do great on the test.